Hey guys, this is Brother Ray Jones of the First Church of God in Princeton, West Virginia. I want to welcome you to our midweek Bible study. Thank you for taking time out of your busy Christmas season to be a part of this time of online learning and growing together. We are going to be looking at a very special portion of scripture tonight. It's found in Luke, the second chapter, beginning at verse 25. And as we uh, kind of get very, very close to Christmas Day of 2023, we're going to take a look at uh, an event in the life of Jesus about eight days after Christmas Day or after the day he was born. So if you have your Bibles and you want to go ahead and be looking at Luke, or look, turning to rather, Luke, the second chapter, that'll put you a little ahead of the game. While people are logging on and tuning in, just let me say thank you again for being a part of this. We encourage you to participate. Feel free to make comments. Feel free to use those emoji buttons. Feel free to, if this is a blessing to you, we'd be honored if you would uh, pass this on to somebody else. We always appreciate it when you do that. So as uh, we are getting started with this tonight, I want you to think with me for a moment about how life can be very, very routine. Now, I know it's probably not been routine lately because Christmas is just busy, 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 busy. But apart from these big holidays and big times, a lot of times life can just be one of those monotonous routines of uh, get up, eat some breakfast, go to work, go take a lunch break, get back to work, finish the day, go home, eat some supper, watch something on your streaming service, binge or whatever, get caught up on whatever your series you want to be a part of. And before you know it, you go to bed, then you get up the next day and you eat some breakfast and you go to work and you know the routine, right? Uh, sometimes that routine is comforting, but other times it is just downright monotonous and it can be even mind numbing to us. But here's the interesting thing. Sometimes in the middle of those mundane and monotonous times, God chooses to show up and do something amazing and great. Now, sometimes he shows up in a big way. Scripture is full of accounts where God showed up and really just got people's attention or did something miraculous, and it was a big thing. I think of Saul of Tarsus kind of on his way to persecute more Christians, and God showed up in a big way and knocked him off his Damascus Road donkey and uh, set him straight on some things. But other times God shows up, and it may not be as eventful, but it's still significant. It may be subtle, but it's still very, very important. Tonight, we're gonna to look at one such case. This is from the life of Simeon, and uh, he teaches us a whole lot of things, including this idea that uh, patience always pays off. Uh, look with me in Luke, the second chapter, beginning at verse 25, and remember, this particular portion of scripture that we're going to be looking at is taking place a little bit after Jesus' birth, approximately eight days, okay? In Luke chapter 2, verses 25 through 35, we find these words, Behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and this man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it, was, it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death, before he had seen the Lord's Christ. So he came by the Spirit into the temple. And when the, the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared before the fall of all peoples. The face of all peoples. Sorry about that and a light to bring revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rising of many in Israel and for a sign which will be spoken against. Yes, a sword will pierce through your own soul also, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. So this man, Simeon, is an older man. He's been around for quite some time. 
And in this particular story, we're seeing where Joseph and Mary, who are God-honoring and God-fearing parents, are, are doing what they know to do before God in everything that they're doing, and especially in raising their child. Now, Jesus was no ordinary child, and we know that. Uh, if you study Joseph's life and Mary's life and how God used both of them to be the earthly parents of our heavenly king, we know he didn't just like randomly pick these people. These were very special people who were just and devout before the Lord. And they were doing what God wanted them to do with, with Jesus by having, de having him dedicated and they would have had him circumcised under the Jewish law or the custom of the law. And Simeon, well... His role in this is very significant. So as we read about his life in these uh, few verses, here are a few things that we can highlight about him. Uh, he had a lot going for him. We know first that he was a man of prominence. He was just and devout, according to the scripture we just read. This means that he lived his life in obedience to all that he knew that God wanted him to do. Many think that he was a teacher of the law, but his devotion to the one true God of heaven was evident to those in the community. We don't know if Simeon was tall or short in stature, but we do know he was looked up to because he was a respectable man. My friends, this is important for us to note. Um, if we're going to accomplish anything in this world, we need to do so uh, by, by first putting our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and in following God, uh, that makes for, that gives us the foundation to be people of prominence. Simeon was just that. His reputation preceded him. He was, was dedicated to the Lord and everybody knew it. Now, let me tell you something. Simeon didn't have to shout that he was dedicated to the Lord. It showed up in his actions. Uh, it showed up in how he conducted himself over a long period of time. Simeon knew how to play the long game, and because he had put his faith in the Lord, he was a man of prominence. He was also a man of patience. According to the scripture, he was waiting for the consolation of Israel. He knew that God would send the Messiah in his own time. He had been told that by the Lord. And Simeon was willing to wait on the Lord. He was a man of patience. Man, I wish I could speak with a lot of integrity here. I'm not sure that I can. I'm not sure that uh, I'm the most patient person on the planet. Matter of fact, I'm pretty sure I'm not the most patient person, but I'm learning as time goes by that it is always best to wait on the Lord. Um, I get in a hurry sometimes, and that's not good. Uh, now, I guess maybe technically there are times when we do need to hurry up, but for the most part, when it comes to the things that God wants to do, it's on his schedule, not ours. And we would do well to wait on his timing. That's what Simeon is doing. And it's, we don't know exactly how long it was from the time that God told him that he wouldn't die until he saw the Lord's Christ. But we do know that he was told at some point, and it didn't happen real quick. Uh, Simeon has to wait on this. So Simeon goes about simply being a man of patience. He was also a man of power, according to the scripture. Uh, in what we read in these verses in Luke 2, it says the Holy Spirit was upon him. Simeon was one of the few people whom God saw fit to empower with the Holy Spirit before the day of Pentecost. Now, just so you will know, John the Baptist and his parents were in this number as well, as were a few other people. But prior to the day of Pentecost, there's a pretty short list of people who uh, had the Holy Spirit upon them. Um, now, uh, that makes Simeon a very important person. He not only is a man of prominence and patience, but he's a man of power. The Holy Spirit of God was working in and through him really before he was, the Holy Spirit was given in widespread uh, Christianity, if you will, or in a widespread way throughout the world. That didn't happen until the day of Pentecost. So 
Uh, what's important about this is that Simeon was resting and operating in the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, why, why that's important to us is we need to know that we who are living after the day of Pentecost now have the privilege of having the Spirit dwell in us and to sanctify us and to empower us and equip us to do what God wants us to do. And among the other things that that, that might include, one in particular is that we are given the power to witness for him in this lost and dying world. Uh, Simeon was a man of prominence, of patience, and of power. And he was also a man of promise. We've alluded to this, but let me highlight it again. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death until he had seen the Lord's Christ. Now, this was a personal promise that God had made specifically to Simeon. He didn't tell everybody that, but he just kind of gave Simeon this assurance and this promise that the Messiah was coming in his lifetime and he would see the Messiah for himself. Now, why is that important to us? Well, there are some promises that God gives us that are universal. Um, there are some things that he assures us all of. Um, you know, he, he tells us that uh, we're all, he, he wants us all to be saved. He wants us all to be sanctified. There are some things he has for everyone across the board. He wants us to know him and follow him. Uh, but then there are some things that are specific to the individual. There are some things that maybe God will just speak to you that he's not going to speak to everybody else. And he's just assuring you of something like he did with Simeon. There's nothing wrong with that at all. We are each individuals. Um, and, and while God died for us all, or for the world, he died for us individually as well. And it's important that we take those personal promises and just take them to heart and wait on the Lord to fulfill those. That's what Simeon did. Now, the birth of Jesus Christ allowed Simeon to uh, see this fulfillment and to be at peace. That's what patience produced for him. It paid off in the way that Simeon got to be at peace and got to have fulfillment. Now, the first one of those two things that I want to highlight and talk about is peace. When um, Simeon saw baby Jesus that day, he said these words in verse 29 of uh, Luke 2. Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace. Think about that. Uh, now, Simeon already had some peace with God, but he was getting to see something, the fulfillment of a promise that gave him peace and reassurance of some things with the Lord and from the Lord. Now, why is this important? Well, we all want peace, amen? Um, if you go around and you ask, uh, who wants peace? Who wants a peaceful life? Most people will raise their hand as opposed to, uh, hey, any of you just want a life that's so hectic and ridden with trouble and you know, you're just never at rest or never at peace, would you raise your hand? Well, that's an IQ test, okay? Um, most people don't want that. But here's the thing. While most of us really do want peace, many people don't realize the only way to find true peace is through knowing Jesus Christ. You see, Jesus is the Prince of Peace. The angels announced to the shepherds Jesus' birth by praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace and goodwill toward men. Jesus is the one who brings peace. The world is looking for peace in many, many places, but it can only be found in the Christ of Christmas. Jesus told his disciples a whole lot of things concerning peace. In John 14, 27, he said these words, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Jesus promised his disciples then, and he promises us now, that he will give us peace. In John 16, 33, we read these words of comfort and also of challenge. It's, Jesus said these, 
These things I've spoken to you that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. Jesus wanted his disciples then, and he wants us today to know that he is the source of peace, and he's the one that can give it to us. Now, he also wants us to be aware that in this world, we're going to have trouble. He actually said tribulation. Those are some difficult times, my friends. And I'd like to be able to tell you tonight that if you put your faith in Christ, you're never going to have any trouble with trials or, or, or even tribulations. But that's simply not true. Jesus himself said, in this world, we're going to have tribulation. We're going to have difficulties. But we can be of good cheer because he's overcome the world. Oh, hear me tonight. No matter what happens, um, God is still in control. And on the other side, uh, and as we step into eternity, we know he is in charge. And we're grateful for that. Uh, he has overcome this world. And by his power and grace, we can do the same thing. Listen. If you want to know that peace tonight, you've got to know it through Jesus Christ. You've got to be willing to make peace with God. Romans 5.1 says this, Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Hear me tonight. The world tries to know peace, but they can't. The only way to know true peace, according to the Scripture is to be made at peace with God by putting faith in his son, Jesus Christ, the Christ of Christmas, the greatest gift ever given. My friend, if you don't have that peace tonight, I pray that you will simply call out to God, ask him to forgive you and to come into your life. And my friends, at that point, you will have peace. Now, again, not everything's going to be uh, easy all the time. But because you've put your faith in Christ, you're going to have the strength to overcome anything that comes your way. Simeon waited on the Lord, and it paid off in that he got peace. Peace with God and peace in seeing God's promise come to fruition. But another thing that he got was fulfillment. In verse 30 that we read earlier in Luke chapter 2, uh, Simeon said these words, My eyes have seen your salvation. Simeon could depart in peace because he had personally seen the fulfillment of God's promise to him. Think about that. Uh, God told him, Hey, Simeon, you are not going to leave this world until you see uh, the promised Messiah uh, physically in this world. Well, lo and behold, it happened. God did his part. He sent Jesus, born of a virgin. Uh, he had his earthly father, uh, Joseph, his, his earthly mother, Mary, brought him into this world. Um, Mary was supernaturally impregnated. That's what we call the virgin birth. It was a miracle of God. But Joseph and Mary uh, have this little baby, and, and they go to the temple with him. And Simeon gets to see the promise of God fulfilled. God did his part. But understand something. Simeon had to do his part as well. Think about it with me for a moment. Um, while God always does his part he, and, and always will do his part, we've gotta, we can't overlook the fact that we've got to do our part as well. Now, Simeon showed up at the temple on that particular day, according to the scripture, by the Spirit. And that Spirit leading him um, is, is accounted for in verse 27. Now, what that means is, is that God led Simeon, but Simeon had to follow. Now, I'm very certain this was not Simeon's first trip to the temple. No, Simeon had been to the temple a lot. I mean, a whole lot, day in and day out. And it could very well have been that every time he went in there, he thought, Lord, is this going to be the day when I see the fulfillment of your promise? Is this the day when the Messiah is going to show up? Is this the day that my peace will be fulfilled and my life will be fulfilled? 
day in and day out. And while good things may have happened each time when he went to temple, those the, the, seeing the, the fulfillment of that particular promise didn't happen. Not all of those other times did it happen until this particular day. Now you see, I believe with all of my heart that Simeon was um, in tune with the Spirit of God. We know the Spirit of God was upon him. And we know that, that it was by the Spirit's leading that he showed up at the temple this particular day. And we also, or I believe rather, just let me say it that way, I don't believe the Holy Spirit had to shout at Simeon to get his attention. Why is that? Well, Simeon just practiced day in and day out doing what God would have for him to do. And he knew that going to worship on a regular basis was a part of that. That was one of his holy habits, if you will, that he had developed. And sometimes, you know, in the middle of all that, the Spirit was nudging him here and nudging him there. But on this particular day, the Spirit had particularly nudged him to go to the temple. But what if, just what if, Simeon had not done his part on that particular day? Suppose he had gotten up that day and said to himself, you know what, enough of this. I've been to that temple day in and day out for a long, long time. I'm tired. I want to go do something else. I'm, Spirit, I know you're nudging me to do this, but I'd really, I just don't want to. If Simeon had not done his part that day, if he would have, let's say, given in to maybe the temptation to just not show up at that particular time, he would have missed out on one of the most important things of his entire life. Thank God Simeon didn't do that. Well, what about us? Um, you got anything going on in your life where, you know, you've been faithful to God, you've just been getting up each day and doing what you knew to do, and you know a long time ago God told you, you know what, trust me, follow me, and you said yes to that, praise the Lord for that. Uh, you've trusted him with your soul's salvation, you've trusted him with everything else, you know, other things along the way, and some of those days when you get up, you feel really, really close to God, but other days you might not feel quite as close to him, and it's not because you've done anything wrong necessarily or anything like that. It's just some days are more exciting than others. And, and the Lord's timing comes when the Lord's timing comes and you're waiting. Well, then you get that gentle nudge from the Lord. It'd be real easy to ignore that. But my friends, I want to encourage you, don't do that. You see, whatever it is that God has for you, He's going to bring it about in his own good way, in his own good time. He's going to bring about fulfillment. Well, the Apostle Paul wrote to a young minister named Timothy. He was trying to help him understand that he needed to do his part in fulfilling what God had called him to do. Simeon had to fulfill his part. We've got to do the same. And what Paul wrote to Timothy helps us underscore that. It's in 2 Timothy, the fourth chapter, beginning at verse 1. I charge you, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. But you be watchful in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. For I'm all, I am already being poured out as a drink offering and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight, I have finished the race, I've kept the faith. Finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day, and not to me only, but also to all who have loved his appearing. What is Paul telling Timothy? Hey, buddy, you got to do your part. God's called you into ministry. God's equipped you to do these things. 
but you've got to step up and do your part as well. And in so doing, you're going to see fulfillment come in your life like you cannot begin to imagine. Simeon had to do the same thing. He had received a promise from God that he would not depart from this world until he would see the Lord's Christ. Uh, God did his part. Simeon had to do his part. Timothy had to do his part. And you and I have to do ours. Whatever it is that God's promised you, whatever it is that God wants to bring to pass in your life, my friend, he's going to do it. But he's expecting you and he's expecting me to do our part in this process. In our own power, we can accomplish some things, but we will never achieve our maximum potential without knowing the Christ of Christmas. And when we know him and we apply ourselves uh, in living by faith and walking by faith, waiting when we need to, but then walking in obedience all along the way, we're going to see some amazing things happen. I don't know what you might be waiting for right now, my friends. Um, I know that uh, as we go through this lesson at this particular time, you're, you're waiting for Christmas Day and all the good things that come with that. And I know that you might be looking ahead to the new year of 2024 and, and hoping that great things will happen there. Oh, my friend, I, I'm right there with you, with your hopes and your dreams. Uh, but along the way with that, I hope and pray that if you haven't already done so, that you'll put your faith in Christ. And to those of us who have, may we go in through this Christmas season and into the new year, trusting God to do in and through us what only he can do and be ready on our part to do our part to see those things happen. Simeon teaches us a whole lot about that. His patience paid off big, and I know that ours will as well. Thank you for your time tonight. God bless you. Merry Christmas. We'll see you next week.